hey there guys welcome back to the channel hope you guys are doing good hope you guys are staying safe uh today we're going to be finishing up part three of our well we're going to be doing part three of our entertainment app uh in part two i believe we uh finished by uh creating the ui ux modifying it and basically doing everything that needs to be done within the front end user face so in this one we're going to be using google places api and uh creating a location api uh to uh to you know uh get the data and render it in the front end with all that said hope you guys enjoy the video uh if, don't forget to leave a like if you do like the video don't forget to uh, leave a comment uh, let me know how you're liking the project so far if you have any comments if you have any questions uh, and also don't forget to hit that like uh, hit that like button and hit the subscribe button uh, it goes a long way uh, let's get right into the video all right so currently if we go over to our um, browser as you can see um, this is what we have so far for our own application um, I did make some modifications to my project. So, and, and the main one is going to look like this. Uh, as you can see, the the hover is a little bit more detailed. There's a there's a darker shade to it. It doesn't engulf the the other badge like it did in my in the one we're building out. So, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and copy and paste that um, the the CSS for that. Um, uh, and we're not going to. Uh, we're not going to go over that as much also another thing i did was um just for the ui let's say we go to tv now and uh we search thor or something like that right so we search thor as you can see there are two um there are two pages so uh the max that can be on one page i set I set it to 15. So if we search something like Merlin, let's see. Okay, so Merlin, there's only one page for it. So it's only, it's not gonna show the pagination because it's only one page. So there's no page two. So that's something I also incorporated that I'm gonna show you guys really quickly. Um, so that way, um, you know, it, it's not gonna show up. Uh, a, a second an option for a second page when there's nothing on that second page it wouldn't really make sense so let's go uh, let's go back to our to our own project and implement those changes right before we go and create the api so back in our ide we're just going to quickly go over to our um components and within our component we're going to go to uh what is it movie first uh no trending first so we're going to go over to trending uh, minimize that so we're going to go over to trending and here right in our uh let's close out of this so we can see everything so within trending we're going to go to there it is our uh class name so this div class name and i'm going to let me minimize this and bring up my own project there we go All right, uh, let's go over to our components. Oh, we're in trending now, movies. There we go. Okay, and let's just wrap it. Cool. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to state. Look, actually, let's just let's just copy all this and paste it here. Cool. So here we're going to say pad in two, uh, the, the, on a medium screen up it's with 20% and then for everything else is with 50% capitalize overflow, hidden cursor pointer, transform, transition, duration, 300 ease in and out and hover shadow large and then hover shadow black. That's all we're doing for that. So now if we come over to trending, uh, this is for our local host. As you can see, it looks a lot better. Um, what else did we say? Now, we, we also stated that um, uh, for the pagination, we made some changes. So let's go over here. And for pagination, 
uh, okay, so we already have set current page one, set items per page to use state 15. So when we come down here to the to the uh, logic, uh, I'm just I'm just gonna copy this because I'm gonna go over it, but I don't want to take a lot a lot of time on this one because this is not the crux of what this uh, this particular part three is about. I just want to show you the changes I made. So index last item equals current page times items per page. Content, okay, index of last item minus items per page, current, because trying to slice data index, okay. Now, here we go. Now we're gonna state cons total pages is equal to math.seal, and you guys should know what that object means. We've, we just went, o we went over it in our last one. Um, trend and data slash, oops, yeah, trend and data, um slash items per page cool now we can go over to our page nation and we're just going to stick that in there well, let's see where's our page nation batch stack dialogue okay well, i feel like we keep going past the page Okay, there we go, pagination. Cool. So if we go down here also to pagination, um, now the count is going to just be total page. Total pages. Unchange is going to be current. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> the, the unchanged stays, the page stays also. So that's pretty much all we change. Um, yep, so that's it. So now let's see. Uh, Let's see if we can, well, trending doesn't have a search, so that doesn't really help us much. <laughs> so let's go over to movies. We can close out of trending. Let's go to movies and we're just going to make that same, that same change. So first we're going to grab um, the CSS for that. So where are we? Let's see. Do, 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 do. So this is the form from here to here. Cool. And then, uh, there we go. So we come over here and all we're doing is just adding that, um, that CSS, same thing we did like two seconds ago. We're just going to add it here. Awesome. Let's do that for, uh, TV also, so that way we don't have to double back again. So let's come over here and we're just going to do that. Cool. So now we have that. So for movie, what we want to do now is that pagination. So it's going to be the same process. So let's go over to our logic for pagination. Uh, okay. Where is pagination? Cool. So here, after doing so, so right under uh, data to show, we're going to come right under here and we're going to say cons total pages, just like we did in the last one, is equal to math.seal uh, data to show um, dot length divided by items per page. Cool. And then we're just going to come down to pagination once more. And let's go down here to pagination here. And count now would just be total pages. Cool. So now we can test this out. And let's go over to movies. And here, this is our local host. We're going to say Merlin. Okay. I guess there's a lot of Merlin movies. <laughs> so let's see uh, Thor. There's a lot of Thor movies. Um, what's a movie that is not a lot of? <laughs> let's see uh, uh, Blade or something. That's a lot of Blade movies. That is ridiculous. So <laughs> let's see. what what What's a good one that's just like a one-off? Um, 
Okay, I guess it's easier for TV. Let's do the same thing for TV. And I mean, if it works, then that means it works. I just can't think of a movie that just has, that doesn't have a lot of uh, parts. So let's get out of here and let's go right to TV. Um, so we already did this. That's awesome. And now we're just going to change up this again. So let's go over to TV here. And let's do that. Okay, so here, all we're adding is cons total pages again, uh, math.seal, and it's data to show dot length divided by items per page. Cool. And if you scroll down, uh, let's see, let's go over to pagination. Count is... total pages cool so now we can minimize this make this bigger uh, go back here so we're back in localhost 3000 um, let's see Merlin okay as you can see it only shows um, one so now you can either write a uh, write a lot uh, write some logic to completely hide this um, if it's only one, uh, or you can just leave it as one. So for this, we're just gonna leave it as one, just because um, I don't want to go too much into the UI. Now, someone did ask me if I was going to release the 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 uh, the the code, so the GitHub link code for it. I will do that once we're done with this project uh that's because it's being saved as we go along uh i'm not going to release my original i'm just going to release the one we work uh work on together uh i will make some changes here and there um if needed but for the most part it's going to be what we worked on so that way there's no there's no discrepancy between what you're going to be looking at and what uh what we talked about on camera like on on, on video uh so that's what we're doing so i'm gonna leave it this way so it's not gonna be necessarily like exactly like mine where um there's nothing there um so this way you guys know what's going on all right so for movies i'm guess it's gonna work that way i can't think of a movie that would you know that only has one part uh, uh let's say tarzan maybe that works uh i get tarzan has two that's crazy <laughs> so uh yeah, I, I don't know. I can't I can't think of a let's say Tarzan 2. All right. OK, that works. So Tarzan 2, see, as you can see, only has one and only one um, one page shows up. You can't go back or forth. So th that works perfectly. So that's exactly we're just going to keep it at that. And as you can see, you click it, everything's still the same. Um, so, yeah, still works perfectly. So now we can get into what this part is actually about and what this part is about is let's go over here so this is my actual project so what this part is about is when we come to location so we're going to create a component well component and a page so a route that's called uh, location so when we go to this route as you can see it's going to ask me it, that it wants to use it wants to know my location i could either allow or block so first of all let's not say anything let's just disallow it so we're not going to block it but it's just disallow so we close because we close it it's going to ask for your zip code now once you place your zip code in there and search it's going to populate a lot it's going to populate the closest movie theaters to you right okay so now if you accept uh like let's say you allow this location it's going to let's let's do this so uh let's let's refresh well, uh, let's see, location access denied, that's fine. So let's build it together so you can actually see it. So, uh, but right now, uh, if you put in your zip code, um, you should see a bunch of things populate. And if you just use, if you just allow access, um, I don't want to say always allow access, but if you allow access, it's also going to populate things. We're going to see more of that when we do this. Now, keep in mind, I am using a free tier of the API. That's why I don't, that's why I don't want to like 
automatically allow access because I don't want it to keep refreshing every time we go onto the site or anytime the, 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 the project refreshes. So that's why I'm not doing that. Even when you enter the zip code, it's still going to uh, call that API. So I don't want to do that yet. Let's do it together. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's get right into it. So here we are. Um, let's come, get out of here. As you can see, for our components, this is all we have for components. So we haven't created the location one yet. For location here, as you can see, this is just location. It's what we had before when we first started the application. So now what we want to do is we want to come into uh, API and we want to create this location. And remember when we first created our uh, project, we we I built this out, this uh, route, to show you how uh, how the API endpoint works. Uh, the API backend works. So now we don't need the. Now that we understand how it works, you don't need this per se. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna close out of that. Um, let's just start from scratch here. So what we're gonna say is import Axios from Axios. So let's put this within this, and then we're gonna say uh, const map API is equal to process and i'm going to explain this in a second env dot map api cool so this map api is being saved in our in our dot env file and you guys should already know how that works by now because we've been doing it throughout this whole thing but where did i get this map api and what does this signify so now um if we go over to google let's go over to google.com and here we're going to uh, go over to places API well Google places API that's important places API and we're gonna go here where it says Google for developers overview places API and we're just gonna click on that now also we want to open another tab and we want to search um, uh, geo code AP well geo code Google API and here it's going to say Google for developers also. And this is going to say geocode and API overview. So we're going to need both. And a reason we need both is because if you look over here in entertainment, like I showed you in my, in my actual entertainment application, um, my own personal project, it says enter your zip code. Now what this does is it's going to take in that zip code and use geocoding to get uh, your, your current location. So, if you go over to the geocode and API overview, it's going to explain uh, what it actually does in more detail than I am doing. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail on the docs because one, you could just read it. Two, I'm only going to show you what we're going to be using. So um, if you want to know more about uh, places API and geocode and API, uh, you can read the docs or just let me know what your, uh, your questions are in the comment section and I'll get back to you. Um, uh, and I'll get back to you. So uh, now permitting it's it's regarding the um, the project at hand. <laughs> so uh, now it's, it's gonna tell you what you can do with the geocoding API. So you can use the geocoding API to obtain geocoding data for one or more addresses or places, including geographic coordinates for addresses, which is what we're gonna be needing, addresses for sets of longitude, latitude and longitude coordinates, access for places ID. So uh, geocoding, what it does is it converts addresses such as uh, this address into latitude and longitude coordinates or places ID. You can then use the coordinates to place markers on a map, uh, etc. Et, et and then re reverse geocoding, we're not doing this. So we're taking uh, latitude, longitude coordinates. We're not doing this for... Uh, for this part so enter your zip code for enter your zip code we're using just regular geocoding and then for reverse geocoding it converts latitude longitude coordinates or a place id into a human readable address you can then use the ad address for etc so that's what we're going to be doing so as you can see let's go to, to just regular geocoding here um, it's going to say geocoding request and response request a geocoding API request takes a following form. So as you can see, this is the setup. It's going to be HTTPS maps.googleapis.com slash maps slash API slash geocode. I'll put format and the parameters. So um, 
this is a required parameter is going to be address um, and this is the address or you can have the components so uh we're not going to be using components uh so it, we also have optional parameters here and here is an example of a request uh so in this example the AP, the geocode and api request a json response for a query on this address so as you can see here it's given us this address right and this is the request this is a demonstration of the request uh, we're going to be using the JSON output. So here it's HTTPS maps.googleapis.com slash maps slash API slash geocode slash JSON. And as you can see here, the, it's hard coded in that we're going to be using a specific address. Ours is going to differ because for address, we're going to be, uh, it's going to be dynamic. We're going to be passing in a zip code, not an address. And then we're going to be getting the API key. Uh, attaching the API key to it. And this is where this um, cost map, this variable map API key comes from. So how did I get, how do you get that API key? For, oh, let's go back. So for the API, what you're going to do is you're going to have to sign. I'm not going to sign in, but I can walk you through it. So you're going to have to sign in to the, to your Google account. And then, um, for example, so you can, uh, let's see. There we go. So when you click insert, when you click your API key, it's going to tell you to sign in to insert your credentials. So uh, I'm not going to sign in. <laughs> so when you do sign in, uh, it's going to take you to the developers page and it's going to give you uh, an option to uh, get a get an api now all you have to do is follow the steps in there i'm not able to show you the steps again because i would have to delete my api and start it all over again uh, that's why i don't want to sign in because i don't want to go ahead and then like delete my api i would have to go back into my code base and fix everything for 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 the project that i already deployed so i don't want to like tamper with that but once you go in you click it it's going to tell you where to go to get your api and it's going to show you some security options to go to in order to keep that api secure everything is going to have its own doc um, so you can read up on what's going on but once you have your api and you've uh secured your api basically you've you've have so you have some um some security parameters around it so that way it's not just being used uh, uh, by someone else. Once you do that, you can now come back and insert that API within your .env file and plug it into your uh, to your uh, request. So that's that's how uh, the the geocode and the places API is going to work when it comes to your uh, your. Uh, that's how the the api call is going to work when it comes to your api key it's the same key you're going to get uh it's just going to do uh, it's multiversal. it's just going to you're going to be able to use it for geocoding and you're going to be using it for places api so now that places api has been explained uh, i mean geocoding request has been explained let's go over to places api so places api is a little different so with places api uh what you want to do is you want to come over to um uh, you don't necessarily need to use a uh, places API new. Uh, you can if you want to, uh, but we're just going to be using the regular places API. Um, now I'm going to be using nearby search. You can use nearby search new also if you want to, but I'm going to be using nearby search. I go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, it's just telling you basically all nearby search does is it's a nearby search lets you search for places within a spe specified area. Uh, now you can refine your search request by supplying keywords or spe specifying the place of type of place you're searching for. So for us, we're looking for movie theaters, right? So this is the the crux of what we're going to be searching for. This is what we're going to be using. So we're going to be using nearby search and then the output, the parameters we're going to give it. So here, uh, these are the required parameters. Now we need the location and this is latitude and longitude. Now, remember in with geocoding, uh, we were just taking that zip code, like it said, uh, let's go up. Uh, that's fine. Uh, so we already saw it, so it doesn't really matter. So we're taking that, uh, that, that, um, that zip code and we're 
finding the location around it. Here, we're taking the la latitude and longitude. So we're not using zip code. So because of that, um, what's happening is if we allow, um, uh, allow our browser to know our location, it does so using latitude. It does so using latitude and longitude so that we're going to write a function that's going to automatically allow us to get our latitude and longitude, uh, meaning our browser is going to be able to extract it from wherever we are. So and then we need the radius. So this radius is saying, OK, within 50,000 meters of wherever our latitude or longitude has specified us being, we want the results for that. Um, so you can always play with the, 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 the parameters, the radius. You can always play with that. Uh, you can give it 100,000 meters, 50,000 meters, any other thing. Now there's optional parameters. So you can say keyword is restaurant, for example, uh, language to return your results in. Uh, if it's a, if it's a, uh, like a restaurant, you can have the max price uh, from zero being most affordable for four being most expensive. You have min price uh, and you have all these uh, extra uh, parameters. So once you get your API key, that's all that really matters. I just wanted to touch base on what these API calls look like. But once you you can copy the same API call I have um, uh, and just slap your own uh uh, API key at the end of it and we're gonna get the exact same thing so I just wanted to show you what these look like so let's just go ahead and close out of that and let's go ahead and build out the location cool so now we can go over to export a sync function post request and we're just gonna build out this back end so nothing's gonna really be happening right now because we haven't we don't have any uh, requests coming in. So we're going to say const. We're going to grab latitude. And lo <laughs> latitude, longitude. Um, and zip code, because we're going to be getting the zip code also zip code. So let's say zip code. And we're going to say await that request um, dot JSON. Cool. And we're getting all this from the front end. And now we're going to say let uh, latitude equal latitude. And we're going to say let longitude. Well, let's just say LNG equal longitude. And just keep in mind, we're using let here instead of cons because we're going to be able to, so we can be able to change that variable. Um, so we're going to say if zip code. So if we have a zip code, then we want to say cons geo code response is equal to await axios.get and we're i'm just going to copy that from here like i said you guys can go ahead and copy the same endpoint cool so i'm just going to keep it here and it's going to be https maps dot google apis dot com slash maps slash api slash geocode and this is the geocode we're referring to slash json because we don't want it at xml we want it as json uh and it's uh querying for the address and we're gonna say address is equal to remember they hard coded the 1600 something uh into theirs um we're gonna be uh doing ours dynamically and it's gonna be zip code uh, so that's the difference. Theirs was a static 1600 something in California. Uh, that was the address they give them. I'm guessing that's the Google address. And then for us, because ours is dynamic, it's going to constantly change depending on where the, uh, where the zip code is. We're going to pass in that zip code as a dynamic parameter. And then the key is going to be map API. And that's literally all it is. So the, the, the only part you guys have to do is get your API key. And that is just as easy as getting any other API key for anything you sign up for. Uh, just make sure you go through the steps to secure it. Um, so that's what this is going to be for if there's a zip code. Um, awesome. So now if. So let's go in here and now we're going to say if 
um, geocode response dot data dot results dot length is equal to zero meaning we get nothing back from that result we're going to return next response um dot json and we're going to say error um invalid zip code and we're going to have one here that says status of 400. Cool. So that's if that, that that's if this code. So when we pass in the zip code, right, we're supposed to get something uh, back. So we're going to supposed to get a response and that response is going to make our the length equal to uh, equal to something greater than zero. If the response you're getting is zero, meaning nothing's coming back, there's no data being provided, then we're just going to return and we're going to allow, we're going to return this, allowing the front end to, the, well, if, as long as we state in the front end what the response is, uh, we're going to let the user know that, hey, there's an error. Uh, th the zip code you gave makes no sense. So for example, a zip code is uh, typically what, uh, five it's five characters long let's say you provide at least in the u.s it's five characters long so let's provide uh let's say you provide seven characters within the u.s at least it's gonna throw an error because i don't know any zip code within the united states that has seven uh characters so that's what this is saying now what if like i said the geocode response dot data dot results dot length is greater than zero that's when we're gonna state um const location is equal to geocode response dot data dot results and we want to grab the first result within the array so geometry uh, ge geometry dot location and if you read the docs it'll show you what uh it'll show you what a, a proper uh, response would be when you call the API. So if you follow that document, you can tell that the results will have usually multiple arrays. You just want the first one because for the most part, they're just repeating themselves. Um, and now you wanna set the latitude to location.latitude. So you're getting the latitude from this, uh, from this result. And then you wanna say longitude now is lo location.longitude. Um, and then for error, you, you just, it's going to be the same thing. Console.log error. Let's just keep it at this. So console.log error. Um, cool. Well, you can also say next response. Dot, uh, next response. Dot, why am I blanking? Dot JSON. Okay. Dot JSON. Um, just say error. So that works as well. Cool. Now you want to write another function. And here is where we fetch the movie theaters. Music license right? So here you want to say const search response is equal to await axios dot get. And here we're going to be grabbing the API endpoint again. And this is going to be. Cool. So here we want to fetch the movie theaters. So um, the, all this is going to be intertwined. As you can see, it's within the same. Uh, uh, hold up. <laughs> I almost just made an error here. So it's within the same uh, post request. So now you want to fetch movie theaters. Cool. So this fetch movie theaters is still within the same post request. So you're going to say axios .get. Uh, you're calling this API. So here we're going to be using nearby search. So it's maps .googles, Google slash maps slash API slash place. So everything 
is pretty much the same up until geocode. So here it's API slash place and here it's API slash geocode. So here we're gonna say API slash place and we're using nearby search, not necessarily the new one, we're just gonna be using nearby search slash JSON because we want it in JSON format. And here the location, we're gonna be taking in the latitude, longitude and the radius. So remember I said the radius could be 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, whatever, we pick 10,000 as our radius. Now, if you pick more, then you can, you know, you could paginate and then like we did in the in, in the front end uh, for for uh, our movies and everything, movies trending and TV, we, how we paginated there. Here, I don't really want that many requests. I don't want that many response back. So I don't, I don't want to have to paginate it. Um, if you're looking for a movie theater around you, you don't want like a thousand choices because I mean, I don't know who, anyone who lives close to a thousand movie theaters. You just want the things closest to you. So you want a quick snappy uh, UI. You want something that's like, hey, here's the top 10 or top 15 within your area. You don't want to have to keep going page by page by page. It gets annoying. It's like Google, like who really goes past maybe the second page of Google is what I'm, you know, so it's the same. It's the same thought process, but you can do pagination for it if you want to. It's all up to you. So radius here is going to be a thousand. Now here are the uh, parameters that we're giving it. So we're saying the type is going to be movie theater, right? So a uh, type is movie theater and the keyword, which is I believe an optional parameter keyword is going to be movies. So it's going to show me the movie theater and the keyword is going to be movies. And then the key is going to be map API. And that's pretty much it. So now we can start writing our logic for it Oop, down here. So now we can say const uh, facilities, which is just what I'm going to call like the response it gives me back is going to be search response dot data dot results. And that's for facilities. I'm guessing I spelled it wrong. Oh, OK. Facility, whatever. <laughs> so uh, facilities. Now we can say const response data is equal to facilities dot map. So we're mapping through it and we're going to use the keyword facility to map through it. And here we're going to state. Um, hold up. So facility. Uh, awesome. So now we're going to do this and we're going to say name is facility. So this is what we're going to be passing to the front end. We're going to be getting the name of the facility. Um, so, and then we're going to be saying rating is facility dot rating. Now, depending on what the response is, you can add as many, you can send as many, uh, as many uh, categories back to the front end. So as many response meaning or as many objects I should say so you can say then you can pass in the name the rating availability uh whatever type of response is there you can pass that on to the front end you can even pass the image I'm not going to be passing the image because uh, I you don't know what you're going to get from the image so you don't want anything offensive or anything within the, the imagery for your app so I'm just going to pass in just this three parameters uh, to the front end, these three categories to the front end. Uh, I mean, there's availability. So you have facility open hours. Uh, this three is fine. So, you know, the name of the facility, the rating. So is it five stars, three stars or whatever? And you have the availability. So those are the things I'm going to be sending to the front end. I'm just going to make it look better. Now we're going to return it. So return next response at JSON response dot data. Oh, response data. And um, we're going to say status of 200. And now let's see. So let's take this actually. So let's let's actually do this. Let's take this. And we're just going to plug it in here. So right before the catch. Awesome. Because here we said if we have zip code, right? So if we have zip code, then do all this, right? 
but if we don't then we're going to be using this um then we're going to be using this to fetch movie theaters so this is going to be using uh uh, latitude and longitude so technically this is i guess re reverse geocoding because we're getting a latitude and longitude and then um here we're going to be just doing regular geocoding so if we have the zip code we're going to be doing this all the way up to here if not we're using this so now we can then uh do a catch error here um Cool. So we're all done with that. And I guess these are just spelling errors. So you don't have to really worry about that. Cool. So. Yeah, so we're just going to keep this like this. And now we're going to build out our actual front end. So let's go over to our components. Location. Awesome. So let's. And remember, we already have a location route here. Um, so we already have this route page.js. So that means if we go over to, um, this is our localhost 3000. If we go over to location here, as you can see, it just says location. So we just want to change this up. And in order to do that, let's just do this. Cool. So now we're going to be importing a couple of things. So let's import use state and use effect. And remember, this is going to be um, use client. It's going to be a client component. Um, we're going to have we're going to use import Axios. Uh, let's see, we're going to be you can also use fetch. I just because I've used fetch already. Oh, I didn't see the need to do it again. So these are all what we're going to be using. A uh, outline search. There we go. And AI outline close. And that's it for right now. Let's just keep it at this for right now. So uh, let's go ahead and start writing this code out so const we're gonna have facilities and set facilities and this is gonna be use state empty array we're gonna say const yeah I'm really spelling this wrong because it's just showing me a spell error uh, but you guys could probably spell better I'm just gonna keep it like that though loading set loading use state oops use state um, true cons. And we're going to go over all this show zip code input set show zip code input is equal to use state. And this is going to be empty string, um, const zip code set zip code. And this is going to be use state empty string const zip. Well, this is going to be search zip code. And all this will make sense in a second. Um, and this is going to be set search zip code equals use state. Cool. Now, we're now going to be trying to get the user's location using um um geocode so well using reverse geocode technically so lat latitude and longitude so const get user let's say get user location is equal to and we're going to state return new promise and this is just copy this pretty much so uh it's not a lot going on, but it's self-explanatory where you don't need it explained. Uh, so now we're going to be using navigator um, dot geo location. So uh, dot get current. So all these are mostly JavaScript objects. So position. Um, so navigator um, 
uh, 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 geolocation, get, and then, then we're going to be saying get current position. Uh, and for get current position, we're going to be passing in, we're going to say position. And here we're going to say const. Here's where we get the latitude and longitude. Um, is equal to position dot chords and then we can say resolve so I'm not really gonna explain this part just go ahead and copy this latitude and this is what enables your your browser to get uh, uh, let's keep this the same yeah longitude uh, to get your uh, location pretty much so here we can now say if there's an error, um, reject error. Cool. Yeah, and that's that's literally it to get your location using. This is the code to get your location using your your browser. So it doesn't matter if you're on mobile or anything; it works the same way. And so after you do this, um, okay, that's correct. So after you do this, now you can say const handle zip code submit. And that is for this. So for this part. So how you would handle the submission of your zip code is what we're trying to do now. So handle zip code submit is equal to a sync. And this one's a little different. Well, a lot different than what we had at the top here it's going to be uh, a post request so to get the user's location here this is for the browser to get it independently autonomously so as long as you give it the access it does this if you don't give it the access it's going to refer it's going to re uh, resort to this code so you're going to say try so you're going to have try catch so within the try here, you're going to say const response is equal to await axios.post. And here you're just going to say slash API slash location. Um, and you're going to be passing in zip code. So in later, um, in later uh, projects we build, we're going to be working with server actions for right now. We're not in this project just because I want this to be kind of an intro. And then later on down the line, once we get things going, we can now work with uh, server actions. So here we're going to say we're going to pass zip code in. And remember, zip code, the state here is just a string. So here we're passing in basically a string is what it's saying. So. We're passing in zip code and when we're passing the zip code we're going to say set facilities um, to response that data and we're going to say set loading to false because we're no longer loading and for the error we're going to say console dot error error fetching facilities only if you can read what we're writing uh based on zip code uh zip code provided and error cool and now we can say alert error dot messages oh, message and set loading to false as well all right, so now that we have handle zip code submit, now we want to do uh, handle search submit. So we're going to say handle uh, search submit is equal to a sync. And here we're going to say, well, e dot prevent default. And this is because we're going to be submitting a form. So we want to prevent the default action. So here we're going to say try catch. And here we're going to also say response is equal to await axios.post slash APIs slash location. Um, and once again, we're going to be passing in the zip code. So we're going to say zip code 
and this is going to be search zip code uh yeah we just keep it like that and then we're going to say set facilities and this is going to be response.data and we're going to say set loading to false Music licensing reimagined. here we're going to say console dot error error loading facilities based on zip code provide zip code provided error uh, let's do this as well So that's what I did wrong. Okay, I was wondering why I couldn't spell. Let's go over here really quickly. Uh, all right. Cool. So we have that error. Um, then we're going to say alert. Uh, error dot message and we're gonna say set loading to false cool Artlist .io. and then say it says use effect and we're gonna say const fetch facilities Artlist is equal to a sync because we want this to basically load once once the page is loaded we're going to have a try catch and here we're going to say const latitude longitude is equal to await get user location so we're we're loading up this function the minute um the minute we um we get on the page and we're going to say const response is equal to await axios dot post um slash api slash location um and then we're going to be passing in longitude and the latitude so we're doing this immediately on page load and now we can say set facilities and we're sending this to response dot data and we're going to say set loading to false for the error, we're going to say console.error. And this is going to be error getting user location or fetching facilities. Fetching facilities. Error. And we're going to say um, set loading. Here is also false and then we're going to call that function fetch facilities fetch facilities cool so we're calling that function immediately so now we're going to state if loading you know what i'm not writing this out <laughs> let's just copy this from we we've done it in literally every component so we're just going to copy it from those components from the other component so the loading so if loading we're going to do this if not we're going to return and cool so for our return we're going to state class name with full uh, min height screen uh, background is going to be white uh, patent top is going to be uh, 12 so I'll view height cool uh, should we make the background white actually we can come back to that it's not a big deal uh, it's not as important and then here we're going to say if we have show zip code input or if our facility uh, dot length is equal to zero, then 
we want to let's have another div here another div here so let's see am i doing something wrong no okay let's just say class name here is going to be flex flex call uh justify center items center label html4 and this is going to be for the zip code And the class name here is gonna be margin bottom of two. Uh, text is gonna be three vmin. Cool, all right, so definitely doing something wrong here. Return, if class name, blah, blah, blah. Show zip code input or facilities.length is equal to zero, then, uh, okay, it's cause I'm missing the or. So let's see. So typically we have an or. There we go. So we haven't built this part out yet. So let's just forget about this for right now. Uh, and then it's gonna say enter your zip code. Let's let's put this within the H1. Enter your zip code cool and now i'm gonna have another div here class name is gonna be flex flex row and within this div we're gonna have another div and for this div we're gonna have an input, the input type is gonna be text. So now let's actually do this because we can see it now. Uh, okay. So let's do it side by side, cool. All right, so input type is text. Um, let's just give it an ID. The ID is gonna be zip code. Licensing reimagined. Cool. Um, yeah, class name. So we're gonna give a background transparent. Um, let's give a focus uh, outline none. No, let's give an outline black. There we go. Uh, let's give it a black border. Let's just. It should only have a bottom border. Uh, text should be black since it's transparent and a cursor should be pointer. Okay. Uh, don't really need this. Cool. As you can see, it's right there. And now um, we can. within that input still, we can now state um, the value to be zip code. Uh, we're gonna say uh, on change. Uh, so it's gonna be uh, set zip code e.target that value. Cool. Uh, div, let's see. Mm -hmm. And now you wanna say zip code. So if we have zip code, then we want the button. So if we have a zip code and class name here would be button, button primary. Uh, then we want an on click and on click is going to be the set set zip code to that cool 
And within this button, we want AI outline close. Want the class name to be text large and text black. Music licensing reimagined. Once again, we don't really need this part. Okay, so let's try that out. So basically, if I click this, as you can see, I get the I get the clear button. So if anything's written in there, I press that X, it clears it right out. So that's that's what that uh that's what that AI outline class name is doing. But let's see, it should be flexed. So are we still within flex? row no so this should be up here i believe Music licensing reimagined. there we go so let's give this its own div cool so let's try this now So we're just going to give it its own div. All right. So it's within that. So once we have that, um, now we can state button. So now we have some, another button. So button type is submit, not text. Um, we're going to have an on click and this is going to say handle zip code submit class name here is going to be flex shrink zero background green 500 hover um, background green 700 order green 500 uh, let's go hover background um, nah, let's go border green 700 text we want it to be small border should be four text should be black Music licensing reimagined. Pen and Y of one, pen X of two, and we want it rounded. Now within this button, we can have the AI outline search class name. We're just gonna say text 1.5 Vmin. Cool, and there you have it. So let's see. Okay, so let's look over here really quickly. Transparent, focus outline, border black, border B. Okay, so I don't like the fact that that is outside. So let's take out this border black. Let's see. Oh, I know why, okay. So let's, where's the focus outline? Let's say none. There we go. So that's a little better. Uh, let's see if we give it one point. Where do we give it down here? 1.5 V min. Let's see how that works. There we go. That looks a little, uh, let's give it 1.7. Uh, let's give it a little pad in. Let's not do that. Music let's see. Uh, let's say pad in right to. Okay. Let's not do that. <laughs> so let's just keep that pad in this, and then you can just click the X. 
to close out there we go um you can customize the css however uh i don't know if i like this black this pure white but we'll see but basically what we're saying is um we're able to enter our zip code here and then if if we do have a zip code we want this outline close button in order to help us close out of it um and then uh if we don't have the zip code currently then we just want this submit button which which is this and on click it's gonna activate the handle uh, zip code submit and if you can remember the handle zip code submit is a post request and it's posting the zip code to the database and it's grabbing back the the response using the facilities uh state state hook so now we're gonna write uh write out the ui ux for when we do get the data back all right so for the other part of the condition statement we're just gonna enclose these divs with these fragments here awesome and now we can say div class is class name with full we're gonna say height is full and we're gonna justify um and cool and here we're gonna have a form and this class name is going to be pattern of one, pattern bottom of eight. Music licensing. And we're going to have an unsubmit. And this unsubmit is going to be handle search submit. And here we're going to say input type is equal to text. Uh, we're going to say class name is background transparent uh, focus outline none. Uh, let's give it a border B text black uh, cursor pointer. Uh, let's give it a placeholder Music and we're going to say enter new zip code cool the value here is going to be search zip code on change we're going to have a set search zip code and it's going to be e not target, not value. Cool. So as you can see here, we're stating that where's uh, if um, if the facilities dot length is equal to zero, so show zip code input or facilities dot length as zero is equal to zero, then we're gonna have all of this. If not, we're gonna have a form that's going to have a that's going to have a uh, we're going to have a form with an unsubmit for handle search submit whereas here we had handle zip code submit so that's the difference so here's that's what this form is doing so now we're going to state search so if we have search zip code then we want to say um button class name text black uh, rounded medium pattern 1.5 we are gonna have the AI outline close just like we had at the top the class name here is gonna be text large uh, text black Cool. And now we're gonna here we're gonna have button type is equal to um, submit. The class name here is gonna be flex shrink zero background green five hundred hover uh, border green. 
700 border green 500 hover border green 700 hold up it's this should be background there we go 700 uh text is small border is four text um White, uh, pad in Y of one, pad in X of two, rounded. Here we're gonna say AI outline search with the class name text Music large. Okay, so you know what? After looking at this, there's a lot of redundancy, so it might be a little confusing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my other code from my project, and I'm gonna see if I can reduce the amount of redundancy based on what I have on that code. So let's see. So here, facilities, because the show, the search, uh, the zip code state hooks are kind of a lot. I wanna have it be too confusing. Okay, so we don't need this search because we already have the zip code here. So we don't want to make it too redundant. So let's do this. Uh, uh, zip code. Okay, so let's just make this a handle submit rather than a handle zip code. So uh, we the, the code isn't wrong. It's just inefficient, <laughs> meaning it... it, it it can be written more efficiently, I guess you could say. So with less lines of code to to get to the to what we want to get to. So rather than that, we're just gonna have uh, handle submit uh, event that prevent events that prevent default here, and uh, we're gonna set load in here to true first, and then we're gonna have our try catch. So. Uh, yeah Music licensing. and then we don't we're not gonna need yeah we're not gonna need this handle search submit so that way that code kind of takes care of it and within our use effect let's see okay all right all right Uh, this is fine. This is fine. All right, so here, let's see if we can reduce the amount of code we have. Uh, this might be a little hard to see, but once I'm done, I'll like make it a widescreen so it can be uh, so you could you could see what's going on. Uh, I just want to make sure we don't have more than we need. So, in fact, you know what? Uh, yeah let's do this so from here to here so let's take this div out yeah let's take this div out and let's just quickly rewrite it i mean you can keep it the same way if you want uh i just think it's not as uh what's the word i'm looking for i don't think it's as efficient so not that div it's this div so 103. Ugh. All right, let's do it this way. From 79 to 103. Is it 79? No, 75 to 103. All right. Now we can have this div here. Cool. So now we can say, um, uh, actually, it's going to be a form, not even a div. Cool. 
and the class name is going to be flex flex column uh, items center uh, then we're going to have an unsubmit and the unsubmit here is going to be handle submit yeah I, yeah so all this get rid gets rid of like excess line of code that we don't need nothing we're doing here is going to be new code it's literally what we wrote we're just shedding some of the fat let's put it that way uh sex is large and we're gonna say enter your zip code and i will show you this once we're done with it Uh, let's wrap this in a H1. Enter your zip code. Cool. So we have our label there, and now we can have a div and a class name here is going to be flex. Apologies if this is a little bit everywhere, but trust me, once we're done, you'll be able to see it properly. So you can like skip to where I'm done with this. So that way um, it looks a little bit more tidy. It's the same code, I promise you. It's just, we're just shedding some parts that we don't need. We had way too many um, hooks that we were using and way too many uh, functions that we didn't need. So focus, outline black, actually let's say outline none. That's what we went with the other time. And then border black, uh, and then border B. Text is black, margin right of two. Uh, value here is zip code. On change is E. Jeez. And then we're going to say set zip code E dot target dot value. Music licensing reimagined. Now we can make that button and the type is going to be submit class name here. Uh, background green. Um, what was it? Artlist IO. And then Okay, so background green 500, hover background green 700. Seven hundred uh, text white pattern X of two pattern Y of one rounded. Hopefully, I'm not losing you guys. Just give me a second, and I promise it's gonna make all the sense in the world. Uh, Uh, let's see. AI outline search class name text large. Artlist.io. Cool. And now we can say if we have zip code. then we want the button um type equals button on click is function set zip code And you guys remember what this is for. It's to clear it out. Um, 
So class name here is margin left of two. Um, sex is gonna be black. And we're just gonna have AI outline close. Class name, text large. And that should be good enough. Music licensing reimagined. Cool. And just like that, we're done. So rather than have a form here uh, for this, so let's minimize this. Okay. And now let's make this bigger. So this is the code now. Let's. So now we have just one hook for uh, for zip code, and we have one hook for uh, for show zip code input and set show zip code input. Everything here for get users the same. Handle submit now handles our submit the submission of the form uh, for use effect. We're getting the data immediately because it's within use effect, and we're calling that function within use effect. This is still the same for if loading. Now for the return, here we have a we have the form automatically. It's not a condition anymore. Uh, well, it's a condition, but we have the form first, and we we're not duplicating it. So we have this form all the way down here. So this form is the same thing. Enter your zip code. Uh, the input here uh, on change it says zip code to this uh, e dot target dot value uh, button the search and now. We, so we close it at the form here. So now we render this condition. This uh, this condition is just going to be the data we get back rather than another form. So as you can see, we were basically rendering two forms. That's why it didn't really make sense. I had to go back and be like, hey, wait, I'm, this is kind of redundant. So now we can write out uh, the actual code that we need. So let's just see. Let's make sure that's what I said. Uh... Yeah, that's fine. So now let's minimize. Okay, I guess we can't minimize that. So that then is a little sensitive. <laughs> so awesome. Cool. So here, rather than this fragment, we can just go ahead and start off with a div. And with this div, we can now say oh, class name, jeez, jeez. I guess the, it's not auto filling anymore. So we can say P, pattern of five, you want it as a grid. You want the grid columns to be one uh, on a medium screen and up. You want the grid columns to be two on a large you want grid columns to be three and then you want a gap of four in between so when we come over here what we're going to say is facilities dot map and we're going to map using facility and index and we're going to state um let's give it a div again let's give it a div key equal to index uh-huh and then give it a class name of text black music licensing reimagined cool so now we can use the image and here we're gonna state uh source is equal to right now we have nothing in there um, but we'll come back and put something in there. It's going to draw an error for right now, but we're going to say movie theater. There we go. Movie theater. Um, let's, let's hyphenate it. Movie theater. Uh, and then the width is going to be 400. The height is going to be 300. Class name with full um height it's gonna be about 30 let's say 50 50 view height uh object cover not contain rounded is gonna be large 
So now we're still going to get this er get the error because of that. Uh, but let's see. Let's do this. So I'm just going to come over to ChatGPT. And I'm going to say, can you create a movie theater placeholder image? And then I'm just going to head and do that. And it should create an image for a movie theater. So uh, whatever it creates, we're just going to grab that, download it. Now, I'm not going to be. So, yeah, see, you can grab that. And um, eh, we can actually grab this. This isn't that bad. But you know what? No, I don't. I'm just going to use the one I have. So you guys can go ahead and download that. Um, the way you download it is just, you know, you, you hover over it and you hit the download right up there. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be downloading it because I already have mine, but you're going to click, uh, click out of it. You can close it. Um, so for you guys that don't have chat GPT, if you don't want to like <laughs> join the chat GPT bandwagon, or if you just don't want to create an account, uh, that's fine as well. You can just go find an image on Google that you want to use as a placeholder. And then when you go ahead and do that, you're going to come over to, uh, let's minimize components. Let's minimize uh, location and API. So you're going to come into uh, source, your source folder, and you're going to create a new uh, a, well, a new folder and I'm going to call this folder assets right and within assets I'm going to create a new file called images uh, well I'm going to create a new folder within it called images and within image I'm going to go ahead and grab the 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 saved image so you know what let's 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 use the image we both we had before. So I'm just going to go back to ChatGPT, download that image that we saw, and I'm going to use that. So that way we can see how things are built from scratch. So we're going to have this assets and then we're going to have this images. So then you're going to take that that image and you're just going to drag it and drop it into the images folder. OK, so now that we have it within the images folder, um, we can just rename it so we're just going to rename it and it's going to be called a uh, movie theater placeholder yeah that's what i'm going to call it. i'm just going to call it movie theater placeholder and it's within assets uh within images within assets and then uh yeah it's the whole thing is within assets is within the source folder and then images is within assets and then we're just going to put the movie theater image within images so once we're done with that, close out of this. So now for image source, we can now say movie. Actually, we have to import it. So let's come up here and we're just going to import it. So we're going to say import movie theater uh, placeholder from. And remember, we have to use at and we're going to say assets slash images. And we're going to save that. And now when we come down here, we can now extrapolate it and render it. So where do we go? Here we go. So we can now say movie theater placeholder, save. Okay. Cancel. What's the problem here? Wait, where did I fetch it? Okay. So what's the problem? Module not found. Did I spell asset wrong or something? No, that should be right. Oh, okay, I see why. So we got to say movie, there we go, dot we web p or something, something like that. It's not what it's called, web p. Let's see, let's go back here. Assets, movie theater, movie theater, placeholder, dot web p. Okay, movie theater, placeholder, dot web p. That should be good. Okay, so this is why it's good to learn how to spell. <laughs> so the problem isn't with how I imported it. The problem is with how I spelled it, the import. So it should be T-R-E, not T-E-R. So once I save that, you should be all straight. So as you can see, nothing changed here. So we still have component. We have our app. And here it's, um, it's still assets slash images. The way I 
named this wasn't necessarily wrong so it could be camel case it could not be it's up to you um so it should work fine regardless um but i spelled it as theater with t-r-e and i kept trying to import it as um uh t-e-r so it wasn't gonna find it so that's what we have so we're gonna say here we're just gonna import it within images where is it so within image uh image source would be movie theater placeholder and this is that uh alt is movie theater uh width is 400 height is 300 class name is width full height is 50 view height uh object cover rounded is large and now we can add other things so here we can say um uh h1 i'm gonna have class name here and this is gonna be text center um we're gonna have the facility dot name cool and let's just bring this down and here we're just gonna have this as um let's use this let's have this as a p um and here the class name would just be text center as well but here we're going to do something different we're going to say if facility dot rating is equal to zero um uh, then don't show me the rating then don't show me anything else um if it's greater than zero let's see then Music licensing reimagined. we want the facility dot rating and you want the stars cool so you want it so if it's like if it's zero then you don't have to say zero stars but if it has four stars you want to say four stars so you can put a space here that works too uh and then let's take this p and bring it down one this is also going to be text center now this is going to talk about availability so here we're going to state let's come down i don't know what's going on right now there we go we we'll say availability availability and then we're going to dynamically render it so here rather than facility dot rating what we're going to say is facility dot um available so if there's facility dot available and there's an open now so we have an open now uh field so open now then we want to state that it's open If not, you want to state that it's closed. Artlist IO. And we can just take all this out. Awesome. So here we're saying if the, if we have a facility that open that open now, then we want to say it's open. If we don't have that, then it's closed. And just like that, we're pretty much done. Uh, let's see yeah that's pretty much it so let's give this a try and see if what we actually did works so let's refresh this um, so let's let's close actually let's do this let's clear browsing data let's just clear the cache so we can close out of this one we don't really need it well, let's quit Chrome and let's load it back up. So let's see. When we click on location, Music licensing. let's inspect Imagine. this. Do we have any errors? So something's going on because it's not rendering. Um, let's see. Let's go All right, guys. So I was able to figure out why the zip code, the show zip code kept showing rather than, uh, 
let me let me do this it, it makes more sense uh, let's do that so here as you can see it kept saying enter zip code even though we allowed access for it to, to like uh, get our location and the reason was because it wasn't getting my uh my uh dot env file so i did not save my map key api within my dot env so it just it th there was no data coming back so that's why so the the code is correct i just forgot to save my uh, api key within the dot env and then another thing i found out while i was trying to debug not knowing that that was the reason why was um within the use effect so let's do this so within the use effect so you should have this as your use effect this is what we had um the only thing we were missing was this set show zip code input to true within error so if there's an error um so meaning it's not allowed to we're not able to fetch the facilities like um we weren't given permission to access the location then we want to set show zip code input to true and up here uh set show in uh set where is it Z uh set show zip code input you state is a string uh so here we just want to set it to true and that's pretty much it and like it says this currently sets the zip code input display so we just take this off i'll just put that there just to remember uh, and then um, that's it. And then we have this loading. Um, we have this loading being returned, and that's 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 all we needed to do. And then in our route um, here, we just said console log error uh, error, uh, and we return next response .json. I believe we just return error. This is the proper way to go about it, unless it's going to throw an error. So uh, in order to return a json error you're, you're gonna have to put it this way this is the correct structure so it's console dot error 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 and then return next response dot json uh in an uh then an object it's gonna say error internal server error and then the status of 500 and just like that we're done so when we save it we're done with this back api back end api uh let's clean up our code a bit so let's clean this up and apologies if this wasn't as smooth as it's, it was supposed to be. It's just um, I had to clean up the code while I was writing it uh, because I, it just there was a more efficient way to do it, which I figured out while I was writing it. So uh, that's that's the reason why. So here, all we have to do now is when we go ahead and uh, allow access and we say done, let's go ahead and refresh that page. So this should work. I don't know why it's doing this now. There we go. So we refresh it. It gets the data and it loads the data up for us. So these are all the movie theaters that are close to me within the, uh, within the, um, what's it called? <laughs> within the, uh, uh, radius that was, that was, uh, set so this is within what ten thousand meters so this these are the movie theaters close to me within ten thousand meters so uh, now you can go ahead and also enclose it with a url and then you can return a, this each particular way uh each particular um uh theater you can uh return their url and then enclose the image with the url so when you click on it you can go to that particular website now i'm not going to add that feature just because i don't want to <laughs> but if you guys want me to i can go ahead and uh uh do a, a short video on how to do so but yeah this is this is all this is our project um when you go to entertainment it still works perfectly uh so yeah this is this is our project and um i hope you guys enjoyed it um sorry if this one wasn't as smooth it's just i was trying to make sure everything was more um i was trying to make sure that this one was more efficient so that way we don't have a, a bloated we just don't have bloated code that we don't need um so yeah that's that's all we needed to do so if you had any questions or have any questions don't forget to ask in the comment section um the code for this i should be linking the the, the github code for this once i save it so for those that that asked in the comment section i will be linking the, uh, the the github code the minute i'm done with it and i think i'm gonna make a part four or just a random part to show you how to um 
uh, it might not be a part four it might not be part of the playlist it might just be a single one on its own and this is going to show you how to um um it's going to show you how to deploy a Next.js application to a VPS, so the Hostinger VPS. So if you want to, uh, if you want to see that, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to thumb this video up. Don't forget to write in the comment section what you think about the video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for sticking with it, and I'll see you guys on whatever the next one is. Peace. Reimagined. List I O Music Licensing Reimagined. List I O
Artlist.io. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist.io Music licensing reimagined. Artlist.io Music licensing reimagined. Artlist.io Artlist.io Music licensing reimagined. Artlist IO Music Licensing Reimagined. Artlist IO Music Licensing Reimagined.
Atlas.io. Artlist.io Music licensing reimagined. List I O Music Licensing Reimagined. Artlist IO Music Licensing Reimagined. Artlist IO Artlist IO Music licensing reimagined. Artlist IO Music Licensing Reimagined. Artlist IO
music licensing reimagined. List I O Music Licensing Reimagined. Music licensing reimagined. List I O Music Licensing Reimagined. List I O Art List I O Music licensing reimagined. List I O Music Licensing Reimagined.
Checklist.io. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O.
music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined.
Whitelist.io. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Artlist I.O.
music licensing reimagined. List IO Music Licensing Reimagined. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O.
Artlist.io. Music licensing reimagined. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist.io Music licensing reimagined. Artlist.io Artlist.io Music licensing reimagined. Artlist.io Music licensing reimagined. Artlist IO Music Licensing Reimagined.
Artlist.io. Artlist.io. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist.io Music licensing reimagined. Artlist IO Music Licensing Reimagined. Artlist IO Artlist IO Music licensing reimagined. Artlist IO Music Licensing Reimagined. Artlist IO
Music licensing reimagined. <laughs>